What's happening? Well, I got a couple of half decent questions and I thought since I was in the shop anyways, and it doesn't take me very long to do this on the fly, I'll just answer some questions. But look, man, if I uh, answer your question, do me a favor, at least subscribe to my stupid page. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I got like less than 15,000 people following me at this point. You know, I was famous at one point. <laughs> hey, at least I know what I'm doing behind the table saw, right? Anyways. Wiseman, I think his, his uh, name is, he asked me the question, how I centered this on my table saw with my data, right? Without going crazy. Basically, dude, all I did is I came in and I stopped and I pulled it back and I came around the other side. I did that with all the pieces that needed to have the mortise. And then I took a block, put it on my table saw, grabbed the clamp, clamped it in location where I wanted it to, and then I butted it up against the block, dropped it on the blade, and pushed it. Then I spun it around and I did the same thing. And that basically ensures that you're going to get a centered mortise every time. All right. The next question was from uh, John Murphy. And how could I not answer a question from a guy named Murph? You know, you guys remember my dog Murphy, right? All right. Now, this was about blotch and blotch control. And, you know, I don't, I ain't a finisher, okay? But what I do know is that if you, build anything and you try to control anything other than what's going on with that piece of wood, you're gonna get into a jam, all right? So yeah, I just got a piece of figure cherry right here, okay? Hang on. You <laughs> see that thing slowly creeping? <laughs> I feel the concrete slowly creeping. Who's that? Oh, Lennon Skinner, right? So, it's all about surface prep. Now you see that's cherry. And obviously where it's all dark is grain direction change, right? Hey, <laughs> I just arbitrarily threw my finger in there for nothing. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I do need a camera guy. All right, you see all this stuff right here where it's darker? That is grain direction change. And that's what creates figure. It's, it's basically end grain. And if you try to control that thing that way you'd basically have to put you know well, Charles Neal used to have that blotch control stuff but I don't know man you know to me if you try to control what this is at the beginning stage eventually all this stuff is going to show up in the long term once all this material oxidizes so you might as well just deal with it now and honestly it comes to prepping out the surface all right so let me uh let me grab the old Dr. Jellyfinger, all right? If you guys have had a colonoscopy, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway. Now watch. Now watch this. You see how it's getting darker here? Now, if I try to control what that looks like, you know, and try to make it even with the lighter parts of this piece of wood, it, I'd just be chasing it forever. So it's not really worth it to me. And it's all about surface prep, like I was telling you. I, I have a couple little pieces of tarot, so just deal with me for a sec, Murph. And what's gonna happen is, like the pots that suck, if you do a crappy job, you know, woodworking, it's gonna show up. You see it? See it right there? But there's nothing wrong with the way that this looks. It's beautiful. You know what I'm saying to you? Now, obviously, if I cut that border pot and then I flipped it around and I didn't pay attention to any of the grain direction, it would look like crap in a project. So if, say that was a panel for a, uh, oh, here's my finger arbitrarily for nothing. <laughs> say that was a panel for a door, right? And it was 14 inches wide or 12 inches wide. And then I took another piece like this and I glued it to it and I didn't pay attention to anything, it would look like crap. So that's what you gotta do. You have to pay attention to the material to bring the natural beauty of it to life. You with me? You see how it's got the lines in it right there? That's from the, like, the joiner. I think I have some tear out. And, and I just kind of slapped this thing together. I did notice some tear out, which would be unacceptable for me on a project, but you know, it doesn't look terrible, terrible. Let me see this side. This side looks way worse. Just to give you an idea. You know what I'm saying, Okay. 
you can now see that I have all the, the mill marks from the from the um, joint or plane or whatever. You see it's got all this tear out right here. You see that? That looks like garbage. So if you don't surface prep properly, you know, and you're not an actual craftsman and you don't try to apply all the rules, your product is gonna look like crap anyways. Okay? You with me? Anyways, yeah, so there's a couple little tips. You know, just use that stop block. Make sure you're paying attention. You're using uh, that thing safely on the table saw so the piece don't go flying out of your uh, hands. So let's talk about my next project. I was talking about this project a little while ago. It's that console table, and this is what it looks like. This is that steam tug of maple, and man, is that gnarly. Huh? So since this is going to be like a, a waterfall table, you guys like to call them, you know, I've never really considered it to be that thing, but I get why it is. You know, I need to start to marry these two pieces of wood. So since the top is going to be 13 inches, I needed to determine what side I want to cut off. Here comes the arbitrarily. <laughs> Here comes my finger again. Okay, you see what I mean? So I want to cut that side off or maybe that side and get a clean line. So after I cut the top and determine where that's gonna be, the final overall size, I can move this piece a little bit to make sure that all that grain lines up. And you can see that this grain right here is not totally perfect. It's just because I was milling it and you know, I didn't pay attention to what face I was doing, how many times, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't bother me because you can see, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> see this part right here? That is the focal point of this piece of wood. To me, so I just love that V-stripe in this piece of wood, and it looks beautiful. So I'm just gonna spend a long time trying to determine where I'm gonna cut the top, even though it's gonna have an angle on the front of it and all that stuff, right? But I need to make that decision before I cut the sides. And I don't know if you guys saw me build this thing on, on my old television show. But the way I put it together, I like to use splines. So I made this little gizmo right here yesterday. Uh, where is it? I'm going to use a router, what I call it. See, so it's going to go inside here. And then it's just going to ride across the miter so I can put in like five splines across the width of this wood. And it's going to be plenty strong to hold it together forever. Forever, ever? Yep, forever. All right, well, look. I got the hammer in here. It's pretty ballsy. I still got to work it out and figure it out because I'm still working like a jerk off trying to get this thing squared away. So, yeah. <laughs> I bit the bullet on a bunch of equipment and uh, we shot a video down at Felda. Felda! So once uh, they get that thing squared away, I'll show you what's up. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. All right, don't forget to, oh, I forgot to mention that my book is coming out soon. I know I keep saying it, but I'm excited about it. You know what I mean? Here it is. It's going to be out before, you know, Thanksgiving 2024, right? 2024. <laughs> and I do have plans and patterns and t-shirts available on my website. So if I ever taught you anything over the last 18 or 20 years or so, whatever, pony up. All right, see ya.